Hello and welcome back to AR77. I've been inspired uh, on this occasion to do a video on CO2. Uh, not on kind of how to insert your CO2, I've kind of already done that and it, you know it's pretty straightforward, pretty uh, easy to figure that out anyway for the, for the most part with most, most pistols. Um, but this is more about kind of everyday use and what you can and can't sort of get away with and what's perhaps best practice in terms of the maintenance of your pistols. Uh, now these are your kind of standard uh, fare when it comes to CO2 capsules and it, it's forgivable to look at these and sort of go, as I did when I first started collecting the pistols, well these are probably, you know, I assume these are probably all made by the same people in the same place and they've just been branded differently. What I discovered um, as time went on is that they're not quite identical. Uh, let's have a look then. We've got a couple of different ones here. So we've got Swiss Arms one there. We've also got a, I think this is a Umarex one there. Uh, and we've got an ASG one there. So they look, you know, to all intents and purposes, like they're the same sort of thing. But there are, you know, subtle differences. Uh, let's get go really, you know, let's go right down the rabbit hole of exciting CO2 um, theory and have a look. So this is the ASG, and as you can see, up at the top here, it kind of goes in a little bit, then it goes in a little bit further, and then it goes in a little bit further just at the top there, just where it gets pierced, is a little kind of a little, a little indent before the top there. That's not the same on the Swiss Arms one. The Swiss Arms one, it kind of comes in here, sweeps in, then a bit further, but then it's pretty flat on the top. It's pretty flush there. It looks like a almost an extra piece at the top there. But you can see that's slightly, slightly different. And possibly even a slightly wider diameter on the Swiss Arms one than there is on the ASG. When it comes to that sort of circle on the top, you can see the circle just in the top there where you're going to pierce it, the kind of the weakest point of it. That's got a broader circle than this one. Um, if we compare the Umarex one as well, again, that's got perhaps a smaller diameter as well, that that uh, that circle on the top. Kind of built a bit more like the Swiss Arms one. They might well be made by the same people, but it's different to the ASG one there, as you can see. So, um, you can all wake up again now after that really exciting jaunt into the world of CO2. Um, but I just want to make that point. They're not all identical. And I make that point for a very simple reason. When it comes to storing your CO2 in your pistol for any length of time, we'll talk about why you might want to do that. Um, let me illustrate this with my Glock 19. Obviously, when the CO2 is in the pistol, it's going to get rest against that seal there. Can you get that? That green seal, that kind of O-ring there, it's going to rest against it once it's pierced and pressurised. And over time, it's going to leave an indentation potentially in that seal. So where your CO2 pushes against that seal, let's do both things at once, shall we? Where your CO2 pushes against that seal, it's going to leave an indentation. And that indentation will be a replica ching of the end of that CO2. So for instance, if you've had this one in there, this Umarex one, and that's the indentation, and then you go ahead and put the ASG one in with a slightly different indentation, it's not going to sit true against the seal. And what you might find is you get a bit of gas or CO2 escaping if you've left your CO2 in there for any length of time. That's the difference it can make, which is why I kind of I tend to um, compensate for that difference by putting a bit of Pelgon oil on the top of the um, CO2 when I put it in the pistol. And in doing so, it kind of, the you know, the, obviously the fluid, the oil makes up for the difference in size and shape of the end of the canisters. So I'm sure that for the most part, whichever pistol you have, any of these three CO2 canisters, and you can also get Milbro ones, and you can get Daisy ones, and so on and so forth. I'm sure they're fine pretty much for all CO2-powered replica air pistols. 
But you might find that some pistols prefer ones over others, just like with pellets, I guess, and with BBs as well sometimes. Um, you should be okay for the most part. But if you are going to leave your CO2 in the pistol and pierced, do be aware that you can get that problem occurring if you make a little indentation there. Indentation is probably not the right word, but I think you probably know what I mean. So why would you leave your CO2 in the pistol? Well, some people go, well, I want it just, I want to be able to pick it up and go get ready and go shooting whenever I see fit. So I'm going to, you know, what my pistol comes with, because I've got a Glock 19, it's got this little tool in there. So what I could do is I could just leave the CO2 in there loose. Um, I've got my tool ready to go. There's no need to mess about with an Allen key. So as soon as I'm ready to shoot, I could just take my pistol out. I know there's already CO2 in there, unpierced. I could puncture it on the fly with my little tool and I'm good to go. Uh, similarly, you might also have a pistol like the, the Legends S40 here by Umarex again. Uh, and in the grip there, you've got this handy little twisty tool there. So you don't need your Allen key. So you could, you could keep that, you know, you could keep CO2 in there unpierced. And when you're ready to go, you could pierce it uh, and you're ready to do a bit of fun shooting. Uh, Leave that there because it's quite handsome, isn't it? Uh, what else? Other pistols, similar sort of thing. So you've got the PX4 Storm here, similar thing. Similar also to the CP99 Compact. Um, that has a kind of the back strap that comes off and you can you can tighten that. It's, it's one of these where you, you loosen it, put your CO2 in, screw the screw tight, and then for the last bit of pierce piercing, you tighten that and it charges the CO2. Same exactly on the... Uh, or for CP99 Compact. So you could keep CO2 in there loose till you're ready to go and pierce it on the fly again. Final uh, final example here, my um, my PPQ. This is my um, 0.43 calibre uh, PPQ. So that's got a big old hole at the end there. This is a kind of a paintball marker. Shoots uh, rubber pellets also. It's, uh, T4E, so it's kind of a training pistol, I suppose. Paintball marker, really, in the UK. Um, but yeah, this this comes with these handy mags that you can get that are kind of like that. Um, very sim similar to a standard air pistol magazine, but that's got the thing on the bottom. So you, your CO2 is in there, it's tightened, and when you're ready to start shooting, you just whack that, and it pierces the CO2, and you are you're good to go. So again, you know, you can leave CO2 unpierced in your pistols and no harm no foul you're not going to make that indentation you're not going to make that mark on your seal because there's no real pressure against it until your co2 is charged how i said that then the question comes should you really ever leave co2 in your air pistols well i think you've got to ask the question of how do you keep your air pistols if you're anything like me you're a little bit over cautious i know what i was like when i was a little lad and anything that looked like that would have been a red rag to a bull. That is, I mean, I'm older now and it's still something that I just want to pick up and use. You know, it's uh, these are tactile things. They're exciting things and fun things and interesting things to get your hands on, which is why we all have this kind of hobby, I guess. Um, so to a little kid, yeah, again, that's a red rag to a bull. What is the most dangerous thing in this pistol? Is it the ammunition? that can't do a single thing without a form of propulsion. There's no gunpowder in here. These are just pellets or BBs or whatever. So they're no real threat unless there's CO2 in the pistol. Take them out and leave the CO2 in. Is the pistol safe? Well, I don't know, because what if something's stuck in the barrel? What if you've got a bit of debris in the barrel or in the cylinder here or in the, in the valve or anywhere? If you've got CO2 in there, if it's punctured, then that could be quite dangerous to someone's little eyes or, or whatever. You're probably not going to cause an awful lot of damage, but you don't, you don't know, do you? And an accident is, you know, never nobody sees an accident happening uh, before it's happened. Otherwise, they wouldn't occur, I guess. So I don't know what is the more dangerous thing to leave in the pistol. Safest rule of thumb or best practice is when you finish shooting your pistol, take out any remaining ammunition and take out your CO2. Especially if it's unpierced, it doesn't really need to sit in there, to be honest. Um, 
I get the point of, you know, let's say you're shooting one afternoon and you're halfway down a cylinder of CO2, or it feels like you've shot about half, half, you know, half worth of CO2, but you run out of ammunition and you think, well, until tomorrow when I go to the shop and buy some more babies or pellets, I don't want to waste the last of that CO2. I can understand that. You might want to keep it in overnight and it's not going to do any damage to your pistol. Um, but at that point, just make sure it's away somewhere safe. Uh, like I say, I'm overkill. I keep a lot of my air pistols in kind of locked pistol cases. Uh, just one second. Uh, so for my Walther, let's move uh, six shooter out of the way. For my Walther, I keep it in this case uh, that it came in. Um, and I also keep a little lock on it like that. Um, outside of that, the ones that aren't in cases, if they're just in a box, I keep them in a locked place in my house. Um, just because I've got, you know, I've got family and there's sometimes younger people around the house. So I just want to be careful with that sort of thing. So for the most part, I would say don't leave your CO2 in for any length of time. I would keep your pistol unloaded. Uh, if you've pierced the CO2, so be it. Just make sure you, 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 you're storing your pistol in a safe place out of uh, out of reach of, of little hands. Or, do you know what? Or just people who don't know what they're doing because the amount of people who see something like this and they, they, they haven't got a clue about, about pistols in general or firearm safety, and they want to just pick it up and pew 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 and you just you just never know so it's just best practice that's why i have it at the start of all my videos and and you can you can make fun if you want about the sort of the firearm safety rules but they're there for a reason and that's why i've got it underlined you know any 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 gun any pistol can be potentially dangerous just in varying degrees so it's best just to get into that safe practice don't be pointing these in, in a dangerous direction. Uh, make sure they are unloaded. I think that's it really with CO2. So you probably can keep your CO2 in your pistol for a little bit. Don't leave it in there too long if you don't want any operational kind of issues down the line. I would say yes, do use a bit of CO2, uh, bit of Pelgon oil on the top of the canister. Uh, and when you're storing your pistols, if it's not pierced already, I would just take the CO2 out uh, and unload your pistols as well. That would be my advice uh, from this point on. I guess it's up to you. So as always, uh, all the best. Take care. Stay safe. Bye.